Let us pray. Creator God, who are we that you are mindful of us? Who are we that you care for us? We know we've done nothing to deserve your love, and yet you give it freely, openly, asking only that we receive it, hoping only that we share it. Come and help us receive it. Come and help us share it. Amen. And now let's just take a moment to have a little silent conversation regard to our Lord for our confession. <laughs>
The Gospel, according to Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Meanwhile, the 11 disciples were on their way to Galilee, headed for the mountain Jesus had set for their reunion. The moment they saw him, they worshiped him. Some, though, held back, not sure about worship, about risking themselves totally. Jesus, undeterred, went right ahead and gave his charge. God authorized and commanded me to commission you. Go out and train everyone you meet, far and near, in this way of life, making them by baptism in the threefold name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Then instruct them in the practice of all I have commanded you. I'll be with you as you do this, day after day after day, right up to the end of the age. May God add his blessing to the reading of this holy word. Our scripture this morning is from Genesis, chapter 1, verse 1 through chapter 2. 4a. First, this. God created the heavens and earth, all you see, all you don't see. Earth was a soup of nothingness, a bottomless emptiness, an inky blackness. God's spirit brooded like a bird above the watery abyss. God spoke light, and light appeared. God saw that light was good and separated light from dark. God named the light day. He named the dark night. It was evening. It was morning. Day one. God spoke sky. In the middle of the waters, separate water from water. God made sky. He separated the water under sky from the water above the sky. And there it was. He named sky the heavens. It was evening. It was morning. Day two. God spoke. Separate water beneath heaven gather into one place, land appear, and there it was. God named the land earth. He named the pooled water ocean. God saw that it was good. God spoke, earth, green up, grow all varieties of seed-bearing plants, every sort of fruit-bearing tree, and there it was. Earth produced green seed-bearing plants, all varieties, and fruit-bearing trees of all sorts. God saw that it was good. It was evening. It was morning. Day three. God spoke, lights, Come out, shine in the heaven's sky, separate day from night, mark, seas mark seasons and days and years, lights in heaven's sky to give light to earth. And there it was. God made two big lights, the larger to take charge of day, the smaller to be in charge of night. And he made the stars. God placed them in the heavenly sky to light up earth and oversee day and night, to separate light and dark. God saw that it was good. It was evening. It was morning. Day four. God spoke, swarm, ocean, with fish and all sea life. Birds fly through the sky over earth. 
God created the huge whales, all the swarm of life in the waters, and every kind of species of flying birds. God saw that it was good. God blessed them. Prosper, reproduce, fill the ocean. Birds reproduce on earth. It was evening. It was morning. Day five. God spoke, earth, generate life. Every sort and kind, cattle and reptiles and wild animals, all kinds. And there it was, wild animals of every kind, cattle of all kinds, every sort of reptile and bug. God saw that it was good. God spoke, let us make human beings in our image, make them reflecting our nature so they can be responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle, and yes, earth itself, and every animal that moves on the face of the earth. God created human beings. He created them godlike. Reflecting God's nature, he cre created them male and female. God blessed them. Prosper, reproduce, fill earth, take charge, be responsible for fish in the sea and birds in the air, for every living thing that moves on the face of the earth. Then God said, I've given you every sort of seed-bearing plant on earth and every kind of fruit-bearing tree, given them to you for food. To all animals and all birds, everything that moves and breathes. I give whatever grows out of the ground for food. And there it was. God looked over everything he had made. It was so good, so very good. It was evening, it was morning. Day six. Heaven and earth were finished down to the last detail. By the seventh day, God had finished his work. On the seventh day, he rested from all his work. God blessed the seventh day. He made it a holy day because on that day, he rested from his work, all the creating God had done. This is the story of how it all started, of heaven and earth when they were created. May God add his blessing to the reading of this word. It was very interesting scripture this week, I thought. Um, to read that passage from Genesis was Encouraging. Kurt, did you use that in Leiden? No. See, we're all on a team, but we are all so terribly different. But I want to talk about the commission of the church. The commission of the church conveys the idea that the church should be a force in the community that it is placed in. Because you see, the community does not run the church. But Jesus, who is its founder and the one who empowers it, runs the church. And the church operating under the blood, sweat, and tears of Jesus Christ cannot be stopped. It is an unstoppable church. Why? Because it takes its commission seriously. Now the context here is that Jesus calls his disciples out from the threats and distractions of Jerusalem to the countryside of Galilee. 
There is this quiet and beautiful retreat center where Jesus reveals himself and commissions them to the rest of their life to complete what he began, which was to make disciples. Now, if I knew my time to go to heaven was near, what challenge would I leave with those whom I love? What encouragement would I stimulate them to accept? In the same way, Jesus had such an opportunity to share with his disciples before he ascended to heaven. But the question is, have we taken seriously his last words which he left for us? But what is exactly is the commission of the church? In verse 19 in Matthew, we read that Jesus says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The word commission by definition means to be authorized to perform certain duties or take certain powers. Commission is about the concept of giving marching orders. And this is found throughout God's word. There are four elements in the commission that Jesus gives us. A, go. Two letters, two little letters, go. B, make disciples. C, baptize. D, teach them to obey. Go, the little word. In the Greek text, the participle go carries the power of command. To go means that we're not supposed to wait for people to come to us but we are to go to them. Jesus wants his disciples on the offensive and not always on the defensive. And this going is all about making disciples. And the book of Acts shows that the disciples did go to the ends of the earth and preach the gospel in any language. Go means don't stay. We are to make disciples wherever God has placed us. And it is not just the responsibility of the leaders, but every single one of us. We are the go-between of the living God and the dying people. Our commission is literally to preach the gospel to those we come in contact with. If you come in contact with who, if you come across people who are physically able, like the blind, then we still go and preach to them by giving them the gospel, which is written for them in Braille. If we come across people who are deaf, we preach the gospel to them through sign language. In any case, we are commissioned to go. If we are not allowed to go and preach the gospel offline, then we go online. This going is not only about targeting Gentiles, but all nations under conditions that mission needs to be carried out. That's the first of the commission of the church. To go. The second element of the commission is to make disciples. Make disciples is the key verb in this imperative commission. Who is a disciple? 
Jesus defines a disciple in Luke, and he says, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. What does this verse mean? It means that a disciple is the one who denies his vengeance and forgives his offender. And his cross is learning to forgive which is not natural. Forgiveness, again, is not the absence of justice, but it's about not carrying hatred. So we are making disciples of this nature in our church who have learned to forgive their enemies, who have learned to conquer their selfishness. The third element of Jesus' commission is to baptize. Baptize literally means to immerse. Baptism symbolizes cleansing from sin and its power. The practice of baptism, which is done in public witness, is important because it holds the baptized person responsible from here on to guard his or her Christian testimony in the midst of witnesses in society. Baptism is carried out by the pastor of the church. But as a church, we are equally responsible to bring people to be baptized as we make them disciples of Jesus. So here in this church, we baptize children. They don't know why they're throwing water on their head and all that. But at that same time, we, as disciples of Jesus Christ, are asked questions and we make promises at that time to teach our children to obey Jesus Christ. So baptizing people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, it's much more than getting them wet. Baptism is an outward sign of what God is doing inside. It is immersing them in the things of God. Therefore, there will be a change. One year when Joanne and I went to Kentucky, we saw an immersion. I don't know how many teenagers, there were probably 15 or more teenagers that were immersed on that Sunday. And I thought, what a difference. I don't remember why I was baptized. Do you? Those teens, they just might. Now the final portion of the command is found in verse 20, and that is teaching the disciples to observe all that Jesus commanded. Disciples are not developed by merely baptizing them. They need to be taught all that Christ has commanded, and also make them observe it, which means make them obey what is taught to them. In the church, we don't merely inform the minds of the people, but we pers persuade them to obey the words of Jesus. When we become disciples who are baptized, our life is meant to be different. And we also want to see a difference in other people's lives. You cannot have the power of the disciple without knowing God's word. And the power of the disciple is to teach God's word and pers persuade others to obey it. In conclusion, I bet you're already happy about that. The Great Commission of God is not an option. 
It's a commandment. John Wesley said, the church changes the world not by making converts, but by making disciples. A church is a place that claims healing, a place where God is supposed to be dwelling. It is not enough to be saved and become a member in the church. The church has to be a place where people get discipled and reproduce themselves in the image of Christ. And this is necessary to fulfill the commission of the church. You cannot have a sign that says that in this place is a savior and not be a place that will help the hurting and the troubled. Jesus says, you either help or take down your sign. And the way the church helps is by going and making disciples, baptizing them, and teaching them to obey the commands of Jesus. The commission of the church is a great command, but it has a great promise too. And the promise is that Jesus said, I am with you all the days, even to the end of the age. He is in charge of the universe and he empowers his church with the Holy Spirit to fulfill this commission. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.